Welcome to the video guys, it seems the Ramonin traitors within the parliamentary system are back again, trying their hardest to go against what the people of this country want. As you know, Boris Johnson has said he will not cave into demands and go for a level playing field with the European Union in any post-Brexit deal, because obviously he must know that the people of this country did not vote for a level playing field, which essentially means we are still in the European Union. Well, MPs from the future relationship with the European Union Committee are now demanding that Boris Johnson agrees to a level playing field with the European Union. This follows yesterday's meeting with the French President Emmanuel Macron, who today has come out and said that the UK is desperate for a trade deal with the EU because we're worried about our economy, which I have to say is completely laughable, but we'll take a look at that after we deal with this article here. It headlines, Brexit betrayal, Boris urged by MPs to cave to EU demands in order to prevent no deal. Boris Johnson has been urged by MPs to cave to EU demands in Brexit trade negotiations in order to avoid a no deal scenario at the end of the year. One of the biggest areas of divergence throughout the Brexit negotiations has been the EU's insistence over what it calls the level playing field. A level playing field is whereby businesses in both states sign up to certain rules and standards in order not to stop one from undercutting the other. Although the Prime Minister has insisted Britain cannot be aligned to the EU in any way post-Brexit, MPs on the future relationship with the European Union Committee have demanded Mr Johnson should sign up to fair competition rules with Brussels. I love how this committee thinks it has the right to sit there and demand this and that from the elected Prime Minister. We elected him to run the country and to take us out of the EU with no level playing field. The future relationship with the European Union Committee has absolutely no right to sit there and demand anything, much like the snivelling shit weasel that is Sadiq Khan. In the report published today, MPs said the UK and EU's respect red lines make it difficult to find common ground on level playing field issues. Because there is no common ground, we do not want a level playing field in any sense of the word, and Boris Johnson has said he does not want that also, meaning it is not going to happen. We urge the parties to look for a solution that takes as its starting point the de facto alignment of the UK and the EU when it comes to current rules and standards, and explore how the UK and the EU could be given given access to their respective markets on the basis that if either side moves away from these standards or acts in a way that one side believes gives the other an unfair competitive advantage, then that access could be varied. No, there is no need from that. The UK is an independent nation. We will make our own laws, rules and standards. End of story. The committee also stated there should be a trade-off between the level playing field and access to the single market for UK financial services. No, we can trade a little bit of fish in access for that. The EU are already expecting as much, so there is no need to go for a level playing field to get UK financial services in that. We can use a bit of fishing or something else. If the UK were to lower its standards beyond the EU benchmark, financial services should then accept a drop in the accessibility to the single market. These words you need to remember are coming from British MPs talking about the European Union, saying to me that they're actually serving their European masters and not the people of this country. An independent committee could also be created in order to determine whether a change in regulation gave rise to an unfair advantage and if any EU actions were reasonable. The EU are not going to be relevant to us, so why does it matter? And given they could well end up in the shit anytime soon, why are British MPs bothering to talk about the European Union? You should be focused on the UK solely, not any other nation or undemocratic shit show, which the European Union is. With the coronavirus pandemic expected to cripple the UK economy, former Labour Brexit Secretary Hilary Benn and the chair of the committee concluded more flexibility must now be shown to ensure a deal is made. Oh, 
That explains it all, doesn't it? The chair of this committee demanding the Prime Minister does what the EU wants is none other than Hilary Benn, the author of the Benn Act that tried to stop Brexit last year. You all remember that snivelling shit weasel there? Well, guess what? He seems to be back again. Meaning this has the credibility of Sadiq Khan or John Burko coming out with this complete and utter nonsense. The MP for Leeds Central said coronavirus has understandably dominated the efforts of political leaders in Europe since March, but negotiations with the EU remain critically important to the UK's economic future. Yeah, kicking the negotiations off and getting on with our own lives, moving to a no-deal Brexit would be important to our economic future because we'll do a shite load better without giving the EU a single penny. We all know that Hillary Benn wants what's best for the European Union, not this country. His actions have shown it over the past few years. Whilst both sets of negotiators have worked hard in challenging circumstances, it has become increasingly clear that political leadership is needed if an agreement is to be reached in time to prevent the UK leaving the transition period on December 31st without an agreement. No, that is what we want. It will actually be good news. With the global economy facing an unprecedented economic shock as a result of coronavirus and just over four months left in effect to reach an agreement, both sides must show a willingness to compromise on areas currently in dispute. No, we can just leave. It's pretty easy. The committee has also stated the EU should give chief negotiator Michel Barnier greater flexibility within his mandate. Even if a deal is agreed by the two sides, it would then need to be ratified by all 27 member states. MPs from the committee also echoed calls for no deal preparations to be stepped up, something MEPs have also urged the EU to do. That I would agree with there. Preparations for no deal should be stepped up and focused on mainly if you ask me. We already know when the transition period is going to end at the end of this year. We don't need to go through that. Either side could request an extension. The UK has said it's not going to happen. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen on her back announced to the EU Parliament this week where she concluded both sides would need to find creative solutions to come to an agreement. However, she insisted the issue of fair competition could not be dropped. She added, it cannot be a downward competition. Well, that's not up to you. We will make our own laws at the end of the day. You are just going to have to deal with it. Now, as I said yesterday, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, come over and spoke to Boris Johnson in person at 10 Downing Street, as was reported by most of the media. Well, he has come out talking a load of crap, saying the EU won't be squeezed into rushing for a free trade deal, which I am sorry to say I really do not believe. The EU need a free trade agreement a hell of a lot more than the UK does, especially when you consider the disaster that is their financial situation right now and their plans to mutualise debt, which is causing massive rifts within the European Union. This French minister is running around claiming that nothing will be rushed through to suit Boris Johnson's timetable. Well, it's not Boris Johnson's timetable. It's called the legal date in which the United Kingdom leaves the European Union and we will leave without a deal if it is necessary, which I hope it is and think will be the best thing for this country in the end. A day after President Emmanuel Macron and Boris Johnson's cordial meeting in London, France's Europe minister has suggested the UK has more to lose from a no deal than the bloc, which I'm sure you'll all agree is completely laughable. They are obviously buying into Ramona Project Fear that has consistently been proved wrong every time. Emile de Montchalin added there are still a chance both sides could fail to reach an agreement before the transition period expires at the end of the year. I am not ruling out anything she said. She added, those who need a deal the most are the British. They cannot withstand a second shock after the epidemic. So how can the European Union withstand it then, considering you can't even pass your own EU budget or sort out the bailouts that apparently the French president is saying needs to be forced through because you cannot deal with Brexit without it. So what the hell is this woman actually on about? They will not have access to the safety net that is Europe, nor to the recovery plan. Given you can't even pass your recovery plan, as I've said, I think we will stay out of that. Thank you very much.
And actually, furthermore, let's take a look at this article proving exactly what I had said. Macron unleashes new Brexit threat in bid to force through £750 billion budget. Oh, guess what? They need to threaten people with this and that so they can pass their budget. Yet you're saying the UK needs to worry about a second economic shock. Use lot might not even be able to sort out the first one if this article is anything to be believed. Emmanuel Macron has warned European leaders they must reach a deal on their £750 billion coronavirus bailout next month because of the mounting pressures of the Brexit negotiations. Oh, so who realistically needs a deal more, do you think? The European Union or the UK? Now, I'm not going to bother reading through this. The video's gone on for long enough as it is. You get the point. We got Ramoning committees in the UK telling Boris Johnson that he needs to do this and that in regards to the level playing field when, actually, he doesn't need to do anything of the sort. As I've said many times before, the EU is clearly in a weaker position as they can't even pass budgets or bailouts while we are getting on with things and trying to recover our economy after the complete shit show that has been 2020. Now, as always, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel and my other social media links are down in the video description. If you want to come and support me on Twitter, BitChute and a variety of other platforms, including my second YouTube channel. As I said, all links are down in the video description. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>